Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet this adorable little flower girl purse, which you can see here in front of you. Now, uh, Rowan Yarn sent me some yarn of theirs to try not too long ago, and uh, this is their cotton glacé yarn, so I want to thank them for the opportunity to give this yarn a trial run. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a 100% uh, mercerized cotton uh, and uh, it's a lighter weight yarn. You're going to want to use uh, a thinner crochet hook with it. They recommend a 3. Today I'll be using a 3.5 millimeter. For the pattern I'm going to use four different colors. Um, mostly I'm going to be using for the body of this bag this ecru color. You will need an entire ball. Uh, if you're using this yarn, there's about 126 yards in one of these balls of yarn. So you'll need the whole thing. Then you're going to need smaller amounts of uh, three other colors. And I'm using the aqua and the shell and the bleached colors. So just small amounts of those ones to add your little accents. This bag is easy to work. It's smaller in size, about 7 by 7 inches. I designed it for my own daughter. And uh, it's just a fun little purse for them to carry their little treasures around in. Today I'll be showing you how to make the bag as well as the I-cord handle and the two different little flower designs. You're also going to need a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and a copy of the free written pattern, which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. Once again, I invite you to uh, take a look around, as always, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. There's lots of great free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials on this channel. Now, although my sample bag was worked uh, originally in the ecru color, the kind of uh, off-white beige color. I am going to be working the body of the bag together in this blue. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and we're going to work a foundation chain of 35 chains. There's 30 and 35. And we are going to be working into this foundation chain, so make sure that you've worked your chains loose enough to work into. Once you've chained 35, we're going to begin round one. This bag is worked in rounds. And you're going to start by working a half double crochet into the second chain from your hook, and then into each chain all the way across until you have one chain remaining. So work a total of 33 half double crochet stitches. Once you come across to the final chain, into this final chain you're going to work three half double crochet stitches. All into that same chain. It's then going to bring you around to the opposite side and if you're not there just turn your foundation chain upside down. It's bringing you to the opposite side of your chain and we're now going to work one half double crochet into the opposite side of our foundation chain all the way across again to that final stitch. So half double crochet into each chain all the way across until you have one chain remaining. Once you come around to your final chain, you'll have one chain remaining. Into this final stitch you're going to work two half double crochet stitches and then join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. 
You will then have a total of 70 half double crochet stitches worked around both sides of that foundation chain. Now for the next three rounds, rounds two, three, and four, you're going to chain one and simply half double crochet into that first stitch and then half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch, chain one and repeat. So go ahead, work three rounds of half double crochet stitches and meet me back here at the end of round four. At the end of round four, your bag will look like this. You've worked your three rounds of half double crochet stitches. Now for the next eight rounds, so rounds five through to 12, we're going to work uh, rounds of half double crochet stitches. So chain three, that counts as a double crochet stitch, and you're going to double crochet into that next stitch and into each stitch all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, that's starting chain three, join with a slip stitch into the top of the starting chain three, chain three, and repeat. So you're going to work a total of eight rounds of half double, cro uh, of double crochet stitches, sorry, and meet me back here at the end of round 12. B. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. I've worked around to my final stitch. Using my color A, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, and draw up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two loops. You can then drop that color A, pick up your color B. I'm going to switch to this white, place it on your hook, and pull through to complete the stitch. You're now ready to continue with your color B. You can then join with a slip stitch and we're going to be working in the back loop only of the next round. So it's up to you as far as whether you'd like to join under both loops or under that back loop only. You're then ready for round 13. We're going to continue working in our color B. At this time, you can also fasten off that color A and uh, set it aside until later. For round 13 with color B, we're going to chain four. And this counts as a double crochet and a chain one. You're then going to continue working in the back loop only. So this is the top of the stitch. We're working under that back loop that is furthest away from us. Uh, we're going to skip the next stitch and work a double crochet into the next. You're then going to chain one, skip the next stitch into the back loop only of the next work a double crochet. And you're going to repeat that all the way around. Double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch all the way around where you will join in the uh, first stitch by work uh, joining with a slip stitch into the third chain of that starting chain four. At the end of round 13, chain one, skip your final stitch, join with a slip stitch into the third chain of that starting chain four, and you can join under both loops. For rounds 
14, 15, and 16, so for the next three rounds, we're going to chain four, which counts as a double crochet and a chain one, skip the next chain one space, and double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one. We're now going to repeat those last two steps all the way around, skip the next chain one space, and double crochet into the next stitch, and chain one. Continue to repeat that all the way around, join with the slip stitch into the third chain of your starting chain four, chain four, and then continue. So you're going to work three rounds. In the final round, we will be switching back to our color A in that final stitch. And uh, you can meet me back here when you're ready to do that. So once we come around at the end of round 16, we're going to switch back to our color A. So I've worked my double crochet, I've chained one, into the third chain of my starting chain four, I'm going to insert my hook. I'm just going to drop that color B, pick up my color A, place it on my hook, and pull it through instead of the color B. You're then going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet stitch. You can pull your little ends tighter. You can fasten off then your color B and go weave in those ends later on. We're now going to be working into the back loop only. And we're working in the back loop only of both the stitch and the chain stitch. So the double crochet and the chain stitch. So uh, I've joined under both loops. You could join under the back loop only if you would like. It's up to you. But then into our next chain stitch, under that back loop only, and it is a little bit finicky, you're going to work a double crochet stitch. Next, into the next double crochet, back loop only, work a double crochet stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, back loop only, in the next chain stitch, Work a double crochet. I'm also working over the top of my tails here. Into the next double crochet, back loop only, double crochet. So repeat that all the way around, continuing to work in the back loop only of your chain stitches and your double crochet stitches, double crochet in each stitch, and join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. At the end of round 17, join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain 3. For rounds 18 and 19, we're going to work th two more rounds of double crochet stitches. So chain 3, this counts as a double crochet double crochet in the next stitch, and each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch in the top of your starting chain, chain three, and repeat. So you're going to work two rounds of double crochet stitches, and meet me back here at the end of round 19. At the end of round 19, join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three. And we only have one more round to complete the body of our little flower girl purse. We're going to work round 20 by chaining one and simply working a single crochet into the same stitch as joining and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch in that first stitch, fasten off, and you can go ahead and weave in any ends. For 
Okay, so I've now uh, fastened off. I've woven in that end. I still have a couple little ends on the inside to tuck in. This is the back of my bag. But we're now going to add a little pop of texture and hint of color more to our bag. And what we're going to do is we're going to be working uh, in those previous rounds where we worked uh, the back loop only. So this time we're going to be working in the front loop only of those rounds. And I'm going to start by taking my color C and joining with a slip stitch into that front loop only. It doesn't matter what side you're working on, whether it's the bottom or the top, but you're just going to join with a slip stitch. We're going to tidy up this end later on. So working in the back loop or the front loop only, we're going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way around. So these front loop loops are exposed. We're just going to insert our hook, pull our yarn through, and pull through the loop on our hook. We're going to do this all the way around, working in the front loop only of each stitch. And it's just going to add a little bit of texture and color to these seams. Once you come all the way around, you're going to join in that first stitch. And I'll show you how I joined when I come around. I didn't join it with a traditional slip stitch. And then you're going to repeat the same process for uh, the top of your white mesh. So go ahead and work your slip stitches all the way around. So coming all the way around with my slip stitches, I'm going to work one final slip stitch into the first. And I'm then going to just fasten off. pulling it through like so. I'm then going to take my yarn needle, so there's still a little bit of a gap here, but I'm going to take my yarn needle and instead of joining directly with the slip stitch, I'm going to loop my yarn needle through just like so and back into the previous slip stitch and down inside the bag. It just makes a little bit of a neater join there. Once you've pulled it through, you can also pull through your other one. You're going to want to make sure that you secure them and your ends and uh, weave them in. You're then going to go ahead and once again repeat working in the front loop only of round 16 up here at the top again using that color and uh, then meet me back here. Once you have worked your slip stitches both on your rounds 12 and on your round 16, fasten off, you weave in your ends, you can then set this aside. We're going to make now a couple of optional little flower blossoms. I have two worked here in blue these are really simple to make, and I'm just going to show you quickly how to make them now. So we'll start with blossom number one, which is this easy five petal blossom. I'm going to take some of your yarn and make a slip knot. You're then going to chain four. I'm just going to move my other items out of the way here. Chain four and join with a slip stitch into that first stitch to make a ring. You're then going to work one round. Your round is going to consist of a chain two then work three double crochets into the center of your ring. Ch 
chain two and slip stitch back into your ring. That creates the first petal of your flower. You're going to do that a total of five times. So that's our first petal. I'm going to do four more. So chain two into the center of your ring. Work three double crochets. Chain two and slip stitch back into your ring. That's two. You want to work three more petals. Each time uh, you've worked it, you may want to push the petals over a little bit so that they're nice and close and you have a lot of space. Chain two, three double crochets, followed by a chain two back into the ring. I have one little petal left. Chain two, slip stitch back down into your ring. and then fasten off. When you fasten off, you can leave a little bit of a long tail that you can use to sew the flower later on onto your bag. So of these first two little flowers, you're going to work two of them. You're then going to set them aside or you can go right ahead and uh, crochet them onto your bag. It's up to you, but if you want to play around with the placement a little bit, then uh, you can just set them aside. You're then going to make one of the second flower. Just going to grab my yarn here. I'm going to be working it in this white. For the second flower, you're going to start by making a slip knot. And then by chaining four, join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. For round one, this flower has two rounds to it. So for round one, you're going to chain one then you're going to work 12 single crochet stitches into the ring. So 12 single crochets all into the center of the ring. Once you've worked 12 single crochets, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the front loop only of the first stitch. So the front loop only, just join with a slip stitch. Now, working in the front loop only of each stitch all the way around, we're going to chain one to begin, and then you're going to work a single crochet chain three and you're going to do that twice in the same chain so single crochet chain three into the same chain or into the same stitch front loop only single crochet and chain three 
You're then going to move to your next stitch, working in the front loop only, single crochet, chain three, and single crochet, chain three, all into the same stitch. Move to the next stitch. So you're going to do that in each stitch all the way around. Once you come all the way around, you've worked your final chain three, join with a slip stitch just in the top of the first single crochet stitch. You can then fasten off and again leave a little bit of a long tail that you can use to attach your flower later on. This one, because it's so scrunchy, you may need to just do a little bit of shaping, but that's your second flower. Once you're done your flowers, you can place them anywhere on the bag, and I just use three, but you're welcome to use more uh, or less, however many you would like. And you're just going to sew them on in place. So again, I used these long tails from my flowers, thread them through, sewed them in place, and then wove in my ends, and I'll leave you to do that. Once you have your flowers on your bag, you're ready to work the eye cord, which I'll show you the one that I've worked here, the cord that will be used for the handle. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. It's going to set those aside for a sec. The cord is crocheted and I'm going to use my color A once again. I have a little bit left, so I'm going to work until it's all gone. And uh, we're going to start this I-cord. To make an I-cord, mine was approximately 45 inches long for my sample bag. Um, you can make it shorter or longer depending on uh, whether you'd like to, to be a shoulder bag or just a handbag. It's really up to you. So with your color A or whatever color you would like, you're going to make a slip knot and chain three. Now the I cord, especially when you're just starting it, is a little bit finicky and tricky. But uh, with a little bit of patience, <laughs> it pays off. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook into the second chain from our hook. I'm working in the back bumps, but it's really up to you. Insert your hook into that second chain, yarn over, and draw up a loop. You're then going to insert your hook into the next chain and once I get it through here, yarn over and draw up a loop. Now it's handy to have these loops a little bit longer. Once you have three loops on your hook, you're going to drop the last two loops that you work. You're going to want to hold on to these loops though so that they don't slip away. So you're going to remove those first two loops from your hook. You're then going to yarn over and draw through the remaining loop on your hook. So I'm bringing it in behind, yarning over and pulling it through the remaining loop on my hook. My other two loops are still there. You're then going to insert your hook into the first loop that you dropped, yarn over and draw up a loop, and then into that second loop, yarn over and draw up a loop. Pull them up a little bit so that you don't lose them and that's the start of your I cord. You're then going to repeat that, stit, that step for as long as you would like. So once again, you're going to remove the first two loops from your hook, reach back, grab your yarn, pull it through the remaining loop on your hook, insert your hook into the first dropped loop, yarn over, draw up a loop, insert your hook into the second 
dropped loop, yarn over, and draw up a loop. Pull them up a little bit. Repeat. Drop your two loops, reach across, yarn over, pull through your first loop, insert your hook into the second loop, yarn over, pull through, insert your hook into the third loop, yarn over, and pull through. You can see that my cord is growing in length here. And as you work, it will curl to give it that cord look. So you're going to continue to repeat this until your handle has reached the desired length. Once you've worked your eye cord to the desired length, you can then simply yarn over and pull it through all the three loops. And then I like to yarn over and pull through the one loop one more time. Fasten off, leaving a little bit of a tail, which you can weave in to your eye cord uh, later on. Then what you're going to do is take your bag, once you've attached your flowers and uh, you've woven in all of your ends, we're then going to join our eye cord. So what, we're, what I did to join mine was I simply pulled the end of my eye cord through and I pulled it through uh, in between the double crochet row and the single crochet row. So just find a nice little spot there to insert your hook and pull it through. If you can, it's a little bit tight. <laughs> There we go. You're going to pull it through on the one side, go across to your other side, again just in the corner. I'm doing it under my single crochet row. Take the end of your eye cord and pull it through. I then simply tied a little bit of a large knot and you can double it up there if you're worried about it coming through. Just to kind of make it look a little bit stylish. And pulled it through just like that. Did the same for the other end. You're welcome to uh, sew it on if you'd like. I thought this added again a little bit more texture and funness to it and then pulled it through. You can then take your yarn needle and just simply, oh, here's my smaller one, simply weave in the ends of your eye cord so that they're hidden a little bit. Fasten off the one. And the other side, just like so. And your little flower girl bag is complete. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, once again I invite you to subscribe. If you liked this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to say hello. Until I see you next time, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.